Hi there. This is uh, yet another video in which we will try to solve the um, BS four year program question paper which was held in fall 2021 and it is uh, the course code of Econ 307A and the title of the paper is Advanced Mathematical Economics. It has 60 marks and in the time is 3 hours. So this is the question paper and uh, the first part is having 30 marks and there are six um, uh, short questions and every short question has five marks and then we have the long questions in which there are three questions each having 10 marks so uh, these questions are also solvable in this uh, question paper now let's come to the suggested solutions so this is about the affiliated colleges with the University of the Punjab and this is the description of various particulars of this paper. The first part of the uh, first question is the theory behind the maximum principle. So it is uh, written here. You can pause the video and read this and try to make sense of it. So this is the first part which is the optimum control theory. These are various methods involved in it. These are the various steps. So these are the four steps that we are uh, supposed to undertake in this. So this was the first theoretical part of the uh, question. Now the second question is numerical in nature and we are required to find out the particular solution of this certain higher order differential equation which is a fourth order. As you can see the highest order is 4. So in this we have uh, various coefficients a0 is equal to Z1 and A1, A2, A3, A4 all of them can be extracted from the given equation where B is equal to 2. The first important thing that we can extract from this given information is that we are dealing with non-homogeneous case because B is not equal to 0. Secondly we have all of these coefficients and the final coefficient is An where N is equal to 4 in this case the fourth order differential equation and it is also equal to 8 and not equal it's equal to 8 and not equal to 0. So now we are going to uh, use the formula uh, because it is not equal to 0. So this formula befits here where we take the quotient of the coefficient that is b and the last uh, coefficient on the left hand side which is actually the uh, coefficient with the highest subscript that is 4. So uh, we can now uh, make the formula which will be b over a4 so the value of b is 2 and the value of a4 is 8 as we can extract from this given equation. So we can simplify it and we will get the particular integral or particular solution of this fourth order differential equation which was this equation and this is the result of it. The nature of this uh, particular integral is that it is showing a static equilibrium and the reason is that we do not have any variable that is time in it. So it's a static equilibrium that is the equilibrium will remain the same over time. So this was the second part. The third part is about the characteristic roots of uh, the uh, differential equation. The differential equation in this case is not given. Instead this uh, uh, characteristic root uh, equation is given here and we are required to find out the roots from it. So it is very easy because the factorization is already done for the sake of convenience and we can use these three factors in order to find out the characteristic roots of the differential equation which is not feasible in this case because it is not required to to be used here. So we can see that the first factor is a linear function, the second one is also, the third one, the third factor is however quadratic in nature. So we can solve them separately because their product is equal to zero. So either of them is equal to zero, maybe all of them are equal to zero. Based, uh, uh, the uh, r resulting table is based upon this equal to zero phenomenon. So r plus 3 is equal to zero, either this or that or the third factor. We can easily solve these two columns and the answer will be minus 3 in both of the cases, the first root and the second root. And this uh, part is quadratic so we can try to factorize it or we can straight away apply the quadratic formula which is here written and it will give us two values. The first will be the third root and the second will be the fourth root of this differential equations characteristic roots equation. So after solving this, which you can pause and understand easily, we will get this uh, couple of roots, which is the conjugate complex roots case. And here we have these two types of roots, that is uh, 
real repeated roots and the complex roots. So this was the set of roots that we were looking for and we have written these specifically that these are the real repeated roots and these are the conjugate complex roots and we can see that it is a hybrid case because two types of roots are appearing that is this type and that type. Now the next part which is the fourth part is about the complementary function based upon this characteristic equation. So it is the same um, characteristic equation that we used to find these roots. So we can use these roots straight away and here are these roots that we found in the last part and it already shows that we need to build a hybrid nature of complementary function in which the real repeated roots are there as well as the complex roots are there. So you can see these two uh, terms are basically based upon the first two roots and uh, the first two roots are real repeated roots so this is the formula for that and this is the formula for the complex root case so we are going to write this again. Now we will substitute the values of R1, R2 and we will also substitute the value of H and V. So here the substitution has taken place in all of this step and then the final simplification will give us this uh, complementary function. So this complementary function is definitely hybrid in nature because two types of roots are there. Then we have the fifth part of the short uh, questions and this is about the theory of uh, uh, primal and dual. So this theory is also written here. You can pause the video and read this. A few uh, couple of examples are given to compare them primal and dual and then the duality theory is also explained. So the final part which is the sixth part is about the theory of the two variable phase diagrams. So the theory is uh, noted here. You can again pause the video and read this. It has basically two parts. The first is about the dynamic stability and the graph for that is made here and the second one is the saddle point the conditions for which are here and this will be the diagram of it. So this is how we can uh, make sense of the primal uh, two phase two variable phase diagram and then we have these long questions the first question is about the con test of convergence of uh, this given equation which is the second order difference equation and we are required to use the shear theorem for that. So primarily we should extract the given data. So the data is already given in this equation. The coefficient was 1 for the first term so it's A0 which is equal to 1. A1 can also be extracted so can be A2 and we can also find the uh, value of C. These are the two determinants that will come into being once we have this because there are two uh, determinants for the two and uh, the second order difference equation. Now we have written all of the uh, given coefficients in the constant. The most important thing about the constant is that it is not equal to zero. So it's a non-homogeneous case and we can go ahead with the non-homogeneous case uh, situation. In the shear theorem we make these two determinants as per the order of the difference equation. The first one is this and the second one is also there. I have already mentioned both of them there. Now here we are substituting the values. You can pause the video and see that how these values are substituted into these two forms. Uh, clearly A0, A1, A2, they are all given here, extracted from the given equation. So once you find delta 1, the first determinant is equal to 0. So it's not negative, which means that we cannot say that divergence is there. We have to go to the second determinant, which is on the right hand side. And uh, this is why we have found the second, uh, the second determinant. And the second determinant is also equal to 0. So this is also showing a non-negative situation where negative value is not appearing. So uh, neither we have a positive value nor we have a negative value. Neither it is convergence nor it is divergence. So it is somewhere in the middle that is uniform oscillation. So we can say that there is uniform oscillation in this certain case where the difference equation is given and we are trying to find out the convergence without finding the roots of this equation. Now we have the next question which is about the dynamic stability of a higher order differential equation which is the third order differential equation as it is evident from this three bar uh, sign and we are to find the dynamic stability we are required to use the Rao theorem for that. So firstly we note this equation and we extract the value of A0, A1, A2, A3 and B. 
So we can make three determinants for this because the order of this differential equation is three. So there will be three determinants. Uh, and then now we are going to put all these values here starting from A0 till A5. So we have already noted the values. We are going to put the values. The first determinant is A1, so it is positive. The second one is also solved here by putting the values which are extracted from the given equation, and it is also positive. So till now, there is no sign of divergence. But uh, once we solve the third determinant, which is 3 into 3 in order, we will have this answer, which is minus 44. So this will violate the condition of convergence, and it shows that we are dealing with a divergent case, and there is dynamic instability in this system. This 0 is highlighted because this A5 is highlighted with the box because there is no A5 in this given equation. Uh, also, we don't have A4 here. So A4 is also to be uh, kept at 0 as we have done here. So that is just an example of that. That how we highlight various things that are not present in the given data. So these were the two first determinants which are positive but the third one is negative making it a divergent case and without finding the roots we have found the time path of this uh, 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 the dynamic stability of the time path of this given differential equation now we have the final question which is about writing the Kahn Tucker conditions for this numerical situation where a function is given which is the objective function and then we have uh, the constraints which are starting from here and then we have further constraints and all of these constraints are there. Further solution is not required, so it's upon us if we want to solve it or not. However, we have listed all the functions separately. This is the objective function. It is quadratic, which is actually nonlinear. So this requires the need for nonlinear programming, and for that we apply the Kahn-Tucker conditions. Then we have the general constraints which are given, and then we have the non-negativity constraints that are also given in the given data. So the various steps are there which we have to follow in nonlinear programming. The first step is about making the Lagrangian function. And here we have done that uh, in terms of x1 and x2, the given objective function was stated. But introducing the two Lagrangian multipliers for the sake of first constraint and second constraint will give us the Lagrangian function. Now we come to those Kahn-Tucker conditions that are uh, the main objective of this question. And for this requirement, we can write these conditions theoretically in the first place, where we remember that the conditions are of two types. The first type is variable-based and the other type is multiplier-based. This is why you see the variables here, and this is why you see multipliers there. And their product should be equal to zero, which shows the complementary slackness. And that is also a thing that we have discussed in our other videos of nonlinear programming. So you can refer back to that. However, the purpose of this video is to uh, give the suggested solutions of these various questions. Now, the first order conditions are developed. We are going to differentiate the uh, Lagrangian function with respect to the independent variables that are x1 and x2, and then the multipliers that are lambda1 and lambda2. So this is simple partial differentiation that you can understand by pausing the video. This was the uh, Lagrangian function, and this is the differentiation once we differentiate it with respect to x1. So it is greater or less, uh, uh, greater or equal to zero as per the conditions set in our theoretical part. So the second condition will also be greater or equal to zero, but the third and fourth will be the less and equal situation. So the second one is greater and equal to zero differentiation with respect to x2 and the third and fourth one which are multiplier uh, multiplier based conditions they require this to be less than or equal to zero same is the case with the second multiplier so now we have these four uh, first order conditions we can convert them into inequalities inequal from inequalities because solving an inequality is a little difficult as compared to equality so the first one is now e turned into equality and the second one and the third and the fourth one all of the four variable and uh, multiplier based conditions have been converted into equalities now these are the trial solutions uh, these are not a part of the requirement of the um, question but these are listed here you can also understand them by watching the video which is uh, in, uh, in the same channel which is related with the nonlinear programming so all of these steps they are there um, and you can pause the video and watch this, understand this. And for description of this, you can refer to that video on the same channel. So 
this is the final step in which the verification is done so after verification we are assured that these are the undisputed equilibrium values for this given situation so in this way the whole uh, question paper is solved this was the final question based upon Kahn Tucker conditions and before that we had another part which was the Routh theorem dynamic stability of a differential equation and then the shear theorem for the dynamic stability of a difference equation and these were the short questions there were six of them and their solutions are also given here they are numerical as well as theoretical so all of them are solved here so this was about the suggested solution of one of the papers of econ 307 advanced mathematical economics of the affiliated colleges of university of the punjab i hope this will benefit you in preparation and if you want more similar papers their solutions you can contact for their solution as well uh, i hope you have subscribed and like this video as it might has benefited you